Hello and welcome back to another Flute Tip of the Week. I know, I know, once again my voice is gone. Today we're going to focus on one of the most important parts of any musical instrument playing, and that is the vibrato, and how to use it, how to exercise it, and how to visualize it. So, let's get started. Like any muscle or musical passage, vibrato is something that needs to be worked out and controlled. Sometimes there are going to be people who have a little bit more difficulty learning to integrate vibrato, especially since vibrato production has a very personal idea of where it is based. Some people think it comes from their throat, others think it's from their chest, others again from their abdomen. It's quite different depending on who you ask, and so it can be difficult for someone who has never used vibrato to start working on it, especially if they learn better from being given instructions. However, it can be equally difficult for people with a natural vibrato to learn how to rein it in and control it. I was definitely one of the latter. My first flute teacher had to teach me to play without vibrato. Man, that took a while. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the shape of your vibrato. The worst thing that can happen in terms of vibrato and balance with your sound is your vibrato taking away from the color, tone consistency, and the overall character of the musical phrase that you are trying to play. Whether the vibrato is too fast, too deep, or even too jagged, it can really change depending on the style, tempo, and register that you're playing in. One thing we really need to remember is that vibrato is a part of the sound and not just an addition that you put on top. If you imagine your sound like a tunnel that has the air just traveling through it, the vibrato is the spin that helps it continue through. It is an addition and not something that is just pressed on top and used to interfere with the air. Ideally, the shape that you should be imagining in your head along with your vibrato is something like this where you have a nice sine wave. So basically curved edges so that nothing is jagged. You are able to have it nice and rounded so that it all develops very easily. And a lot of the time, especially when you're first learning how to use vibrato, it might end up looking more like this, where everything is very pronounced, it has jagged intervals, and it's just not fitting with the way that the flute sound is produced. And of course, within the rounded waves, or if you like to think of it as rolling hills as opposed to jagged mountaintops, you are able to control the amplitude or the depth of the wave so that you can have it less noticeable or even more prominent. And another thing to be able to keep in mind when you're using vibrato are its effects on dynamics, the register of the flute, and also your color. In general, if you're playing quieter, you want the vibrato to be less deep because it will be a bit too pronounced otherwise, especially in the low register. But when you're louder, you also want to make sure that while it is a part of the sound and able to at least be noticeable, you don't just go wild with it. So it's important to also have visuals for different shapes of vibrato. Now, there are hundreds of different ways you could do this, but I just thought I would draw three so that you can have a good idea of some basic ones that are important, which will help you in most pieces. So here we have something that is a slower vibrato and more shallow, so that this would be quite good for piano or pianissimo dynamics. This is much faster and still quite shallow, but this is something that you would use more for French flute music. You want to make sure that you avoid having these as quick jagged peaks though because otherwise you could end up with something that we affectionately call the billy goat vibrato and then also there is a faster version of the larger amplitude where this would be good for a nice hearty mezzo forte or a forte in the high register not necessarily in the low register because when you are playing in the low register vibrato is much more noticeable now that we've talked about the shapes of the vibrato let's talk about my favorite way of exercising it it is now time for the return the tempo that I recommend for this exercise is 60. So, first, you're going to do one hit of vibrato on the beat to start getting yourself in the mindset of having a strict rhythm. 
I like to use low and middle A for this exercise because it's a comfortable note that is easy to do in any dynamic and is especially good when you're either just starting vibrato for the first time or you're trying to dial yourself back and remember how to control things. a deep enough vibrato at first so that you can really hear yourself and feel yourself do this in time. Now that we're comfortable with that, we're going to do two to a B. And then as you get more comfortable, you will do three. Once you have that good, you do four and you gradually just build it up to a point that you are not able to go as fast anymore. But remember, it is always about the control. So for demonstration purposes, I'm going to do three beats of two, then three of three, three of four, etc. again in the higher register. I wouldn't recommend doing this in the high register right away because you wouldn't want to create the mental connection of vibrato and tightness in the high register. I would definitely say only start going in the top register when you are really comfortable with the exercise and when you are sure that you're going to be able to have a nice relaxed throat. Now that we've done it with a large amplitude vibrato, let's do it a little bit more shallow. Now I'm just going to do two beats per number just so that I can give a quick example of this. that when you are playing vibrato in pieces on sustained notes, don't want it to sound like you're just counting your subdivision with your vibrato. Because if you do this, people in the audience will be more focusing on counting how much vibrato you're doing in the note as opposed to the color you're achieving. Try to just let yourself do this. Just remind yourself this is a section I want to do shallow vibrato and this is a section that I want to do it a little bit deeper. Something slow, something quick, but don't write down how many you want on the exact note because you don't want to be caught counting how many beats you can do. So again, that tip was like any muscle or musical passage, vibrato is something that needs to be exercised and controlled. I hope you find this week's tip helpful. Vibrato can be a very personal thing, but we still need to have ways of exercising it so that we're able to present ourselves in the best possible way. We'll see you all next week. Flute happy, vibrato happy. Don't really go down. I just had my last lesson of the year with one of my students and for a Christmas present, they decided to get me something that they know I like because I get one at the start of every lesson. They brought me fancy coffee from Rome because they just know how much I love it. I'll, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I've got some of the best too.